I actually love seeing people progress and become better. So that's what my passion is. Welcome to the next episode of My Posing Coach podcast. I'm Amy Fox and I'm joined today by my good friend and lovely IFBB figure slash bikini pro, Katie Morris. Hi, Katie. Hi, Amy. How are you today? Yeah, I'm great. I'm doing great. How are you going? Good. Thanks for coming in. We've had a... Um, You're most welcome. Good chat off... Off, off the microphone. Off, off microphone. Yes, yeah. we have. And um, I warned you before coming in that this would be filmed as well, so you've made yourself look decent, so thank you for that. You're you absolutely for, welcome. <laughs> Making my head effort. look presentable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that was the text message. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Make it look presentable, which you've done, and um, – Yes, thank, thank you for doing that. <laughs> You're most welcome. Thanks um, for making note of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we've both seen each other in some pretty, um, yeah, crazy um, times. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, seeing you with nice straightened hair, it's, it's <laughs> quite refreshing. It's nice. <laughs> thank you very much. Hey, um, Katie, tell me, how, how's work been? How you've been going at Yeah, work's job. awesome. So I was talking to the manager this morning, just like um, trying to kind of work out in my head how long we've been open. And I feel like um, I feel like it was actually it's actually a bit less than ten weeks. So June twenty seventh is when um, we actually open. But I don't know if it was uh, if yeah. So July, August. Yeah, look, it's probably been like nine weeks. Anyway. Somewhere between eight weeks and ten and ten weeks we've been open. Um, so I did about three and a half months of sales, pr- pretty much full time with the crew, helping them with a the pre-sale before we open, and then I switched over to full time PT. So um, yeah, the first couple of weeks were quiet. Obviously, there was a lot of people in the CBD that just didn't know that World Gym was in Castle Ray Street. No, and I think I told yeah. you beforehand, uh, when I was teaching the Certificate 3 and 4 in fitness, I was actually located at that very club. Yes. So before it was transformed into the World Gym, and I think I said to you, because did you see it before the transformation? Did you Never, get the option ever, ever. Before they gutted it? It was... Uh, oh, yeah, no, I saw it when it was being gutted, yeah, but so I didn't you were see there, it prior to that. Yeah, when all the work was being done, but prior Correct. to that... Mate, shitbox. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was so shocked when I saw it. Like yeah. I, I just saw them ripping out all of these walls and the renos and they stuff. They took the and spa looks, out. Yeah, and, and there, were, there used to be a pool in there as well. A pool well. and a spa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, the, the clientele that they used to have in there were quite – they were elderly. Yes. Because it – yeah, so it was an I elderly sort of demographic almost. Set up. yeah. Yeah, so to see it um, transform, like it, it looks unreal at the moment. It looks beautiful. Yeah, and it's interesting because I kind of, uh, like even from a marketing point of view, you know, was um, uh, I was, uh, what do you call that, um, registering a, a business name and, and doing all of that to get a website up and going. And What's I actually, your business called? Katie um, Morris PT? Or? No, it's yeah. KM Fit. KM Fit. Yeah, so when I was, um, you know, working out how I was going to rebrand and uh, build my own website, et cetera, et cetera, I actually went in really like putting some thought into, all right, well, I'm going to be in the CBD now yeah. Um, and probably uh, competitive athletes are not going to be my bread sort and butter. Sort after as, yeah, yeah in terms of I just thought, and stuff. I just thought they're just not going to be – there's not going to be a lot of them in the city. Like they might come to me because they, they know me through the bodybuilding arena and uh, they, they'll seek me out and they, they may travel to me, but it'll be, you know, it'll be the minority. Corporates. Yeah, it'll, it, it won't be the majority. So uh, I, I, I recreated a business name and I registered a business name and a website and all of this that was all going to be based on KM Fit, which was um, moving away, I suppose, from, you know um, – physiques body recom etc cetera, etc cetera, and and just trying to cater for that what i thought was going to be a, a a predominantly corporate market but don't you think even with the corporate market they're still after that body transformation just packaged differently absolutely it's the same shit different yeah. market yeah absolutely so from a marketing perspective i think i was thinking i needed to go down the calling myself something fit road yeah um, and now, uh, I don't know, we've been open, say, nine weeks. I'm actually really rethinking that because really? uh, you would it would blow your mind if you saw how many competitors were in that club right now. And I've already been approached by probably five competitors in the nine weeks I've been there. Males or females or um, both? Both. Really? For posing, uh, bikini, c- competitors that have never done a bikini comp that want to, 
Um, girls that have done a couple of bikini shows that want to, obviously they know I've recently transitioned to bikini. Yep. Um, males, there's a lot of Asian competitors in the gym, men's physique, like just like there's competitors everywhere. It, it really surprised me. Yeah, yeah. It, that surprises me too actually. So it, it may mean that I adjust and adapt Shift my and branding and marketing. Yeah, so that. we'll just kind of see, I suppose, I'll probably get to the 12, 14, 16 week mark and just assess where I think I need to go to to, to capitalise, yeah. Yeah, where it goes from From there. a business point of view, yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. A- and you said you're sort of getting away on the weekends and still going to Wollongong to see family, so yeah. away from work. Yeah. And you're trying to go there more often. Yeah, so um, I, for a long time I've been, P- like I mean, I've been, I've been PTing since 2003, I think, so it's been a while. Um, but uh, I... Yeah, I've worked six days for most of that time. So, as you know, like PTs split shifts. Which you have to, don't you? Yeah. um, And we have to work when everyone else is not at work. So, you know, 6.30 at night, 7 at night, 6 in the morning, 5.30 in the morning. But being in the the CBD, do you find people are coming in on a Saturday or it's dead? No, I still always have two or three sessions on a Saturday. Okay. And then I'll do my own weights. um, And then you head to Wollongong after. Yeah, and then I'll head to Wollongong after. So, I'll still sort of be there from, say... Seven till two, cardio clients weights, and then I'll just go home, grab my car, grab a overnight bag, and yeah, and I normally just get out of there. And for me, a lot of it is, um, pardon me, please. It obviously Sydney, you know, CBD is a concrete jungle, which is great, and it's a great place to earn money. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of earning capacity in there, as you know, as it, that's that's why mm-hmm. this it's so densely populated with workers because it's just. There's money to be made. In, yeah. it, there's no there's no denying it in the CBD. There's there's money to be made. People have got time but not money. Uh, uh, sorry, money but not time. Yeah. So they, you know, they're happy to pay a personal trainer like good money three times a week. They just want the appointment. You know, they want your knowledge. They want your motivation. They and want they, you keeping they want your them positive accountable. Energy. Yeah, they want you, you know, on their backside about their nutrition mm-hmm. and like keeping them accountable and – um, yeah, all, all of that. And, and they want your experience. And normally if you, you know, I, I actually had this conversation this, small, uh, this morning or yesterday with one of my clients and she's female, 64, semi-retired. She said, Is this I, the one that you had deadlifting? Yeah. That's all? And she said to me, um, you know, one of the reasons I chose you was because you were in shape. Yeah. And I said... That's interesting. Thank you. <laughs> like, yeah. like, And I said, oh, thank you. And she said, oh, I've noticed, you know... It, let me just go general here. In some cases, that's not always the case inside a gym. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, like, yeah, not all trainers. <laughs> 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 uh, um, yeah, I ne- yeah. So, and she goes that that was something that um, uh, attracted me to you as a coach, coach. because I want that. Yeah. So if you can, I sort of looked at you and thought, well, when I didn't know you, if you can do that to you, well, you can do that to me. Yeah, fair enough. And, I, and I'm happy to pay for that. So yeah. that was interesting. Yeah, interesting yeah. that someone actually said that. Because you wouldn't think like that, would you, really? No, I think sometimes you make an assumption that gen pop are intimidated by the highly trained female competitor slash athlete. Yeah. And sometimes it's not the case. Sometimes um, they look at it and they think, yeah, she's got what I want and that inspires me. Yeah. Yeah, which is, I yeah, I find it quite interesting. Take my money. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, tell me about the, the weekends. You get yeah, away so to Yeah, so I get Wollongong. down um, – yeah, so look, by the time I get there, it's probably um, it's probably 3 or 4 o'clock on a Saturday and then I would have like 24 – pretty much 24 whole hours by 3 or 4 o'clock on Sunday. I, I just want to get back because it takes me about an hour 45 to get back and then um, – and then – Is it a well, nice you know, drive? Some, Do you enjoy that drive? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And um, and I don't mind having a couple of hours on my own um, yeah. because obviously the you know the working week is full on. Yep, I love my job, but I'm really tired mentally and physically when I get to Saturday lunchtime. So for starters, I just want to get the hell out of a gym. Yeah, <laughs> I love yep. the gym, but on Saturday I'm like, okay, that's enough. Need an escape. Yeah, I need like just to just be Katie. I don't want to be Katie the coach, Katie the athlete, Katie the IFBB pro. Like I just want to be Katie. And, you know, go and, and be a daughter and a sister and a friend and all that. Do yeah. you spend more time, like you were saying that um, your brother and sister both have kids, but do you spend more time at your mum's house or with the 
the kids? So um, a lot of the time when I go down, my mum is there. Um, and then when I don't go to Wollongong, I'll go to my mum's house. Like I'll quite often go to mum's on a Saturday night. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, if I'm dieting, I can I can make that work as well because I just have a refeed at my mum's place and I'll have a glass of wine or whatever. And um, she, I know you like your red wine. I love red wine. Yeah, <laughs> she, we um, we like red wine. We, <laughs> yes, that's plural. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, so we, um, so mum, you know, obviously, you know, mum's my mum. She's been watching me and witnessing me com- compete for 14 years now. So um, she knows what I'm coming over and I'm going to have a refeed means, what that looks yep. like. and So what does that look like? Um, so I used to actually do cheat meals and I think Japan was the first time I kind of started to really steer away from cheat meals per se. Because I always thought, like from obviously Instagram and us hanging out, it seemed to me that your cheat was a glass of red and a pizza. Yes, it was. But, but you didn't really have dessert though. It was No. Yeah, glass of red, pizza. Yeah. That yeah. was your thing. Yeah, and And um, you've done that for what 10 years. years? Yes. Yeah. So it's very recently changed. Glass of wine with the feet up. So you'd take a selfie with the red wine. Yes, with the feet up. And yeah. your toes. And <laughs> my pinot and my toes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pinot noir and light toes. toes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, quite recently, I think probably J- Japan, like, so that was my Bikini Pro debut. And I just, um, yeah, I had a really good chat with a, a friend who I'm, you know, I'll, like, I'm sure we'll get onto it later. I'm doing a little bit of work with now. And we just were talking about refeeds versus cheat meals. Yeah. Yeah. And I just decided, um, yeah, refeeds were where it's at. Like, that's kind of where I am now. I don't, if I really mentally feel like one Saturday night, I'd, like have to have a pizza otherwise I'm gonna like not survive yep. like drop dead or something then I'll have one but, but um but why is that why did that mentality change like is it an age I'll tell thing you, or? no no I'll tell you why like look I'm sure that I'm 42 years old now it, it probably realistically is going to get harder for me to get in shape yep. I didn't feel like it was harder for Japan but um it was probably just a little bit more um, intense, I suppose, as far as the preparation went for Japan, because I had to lose muscle and fat. Yeah, so for the more first time ever as well. Totally. Yeah, I was like, I'd, I was like this person on the freeway that did, just did this U turn, and all of a sudden I'm going the complete opposite direction to what I spent the last thirteen years going. Yeah. So like losing muscle, like when you're when you you've been a figure competitor your whole life is really weird. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is weird. Really weird, like. But and was was your family um, supportive with that? Like, that did yeah, they, they, they just like the muscle, or are they quite happy to see you going in this new direction where no, you know, it's none like of, a smaller? None of them like. Um, I think my mum likes it, but none of them like me dieting because yep. it just gets in the way of you know. Life. Yeah, family Hanging time out with them. Yep. Yeah, so they they probably all wish that I just would. Just retire from competing and um and just you know enjoy the barbecue. Yeah, but uh but they also you know I like I I have beautiful relationships with all my family members and they all love me and you know I'm their sister and brother and like sister and you know daughter and all of that. So I don't uh they don't pass judgment. They just they just let me do what you know. If I'm happy, they're happy. Yeah, that's nice. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, your mum seems very supportive. I haven't met, hadn't had the pleasure to meet your brother and sister. Yeah. I'm sure I will at some point. I'm sure you will. Yeah. 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 No. Um, but because you've done so many shows and it's a bit like my family as well, like for the first few shows and the first few times the whole family comes and then you do another one and another <laughs> one and the family kind of just starts to drop off a bit because you yeah. don't want to bore them. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're and worried that it's boring them. It might yeah. not, but... And you also, um, my um, my shows have not been in like the last time I did a show in Sydney was Arnold's, Arnold's Sydney. Oh no, uh, no sorry, the amateur Australia, the, the, the qualifier to the amateur Olympia two thousand fifteen November. Yeah, that's November. Ages ago. So yep. that was a long time ago, and then since then, all my shows have been international or in Melbourne, interstate Melbourne. Yeah, because I was yeah New last Zealand, Japan, Italy, Melbourne. Australian show was not Sydney. No. Last Australian show was the 2017 Melbourne. Arnold Classic Australia. But still Melbourne. So as you know, you go to the Arnold Classic, you're not even competing. Like I went this year, I stayed with a girl that competed in Pro, in pro Figure, so she yep. had the room and all of that. So I was lucky to stay with her. She came back to Sydney and stayed with me. So I actually didn't have to front up accommodation 
costs. Yeah. But had I've gone down there and just stayed and, you know, watched the show but not I wasn't working at the show and yada yada, it would have been a fifteen hundred dollar weekend. Yeah, that's you, right. You Easily. Know, you know what that Easily. looks like. Like yeah. and am I gonna expect my mum to go and do that to watch me for twenty five minutes on the stage? Maybe possibly 50, five minutes. Maybe fifteen, <laughs> maybe seven. Yeah. No, like yeah. absolutely not. Yeah. And watch a whole bunch of divisions that she doesn't really give a stuff about she just wants to see her little katie on stage for like 12 minutes yeah like with a 1500 dollars price tag and i wouldn't do that to my mum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i know i you remember know? yeah exactly exactly i think i took they my nana care. once and um yeah i was on the stage for all of about five minutes and nana's sitting in the crowd with big muscly guys <laughs> and their big heads in the way like she could barely see anything anyway poor nan yeah but you know she loved it but once is enough Half the time, isn't it? Yeah, but no, look, um, when I was still doing shows in Sydney, yeah, there wasn't many shows that my, my mum missed. Yeah. I've had my nieces at my shows, my sisters come to watch. I don't think my brother's ever watched me compete, but yeah, my sister and my nieces. Um, and I think once, maybe one of my nephews, always my mum. Yeah. 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 Always, always your mum. Always. Yeah. yeah, she's my biggest biggest fan and supporter. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Hey Katie, what were you, what were you like growing up? Like, were you always into the the sport as a kid as well? Like? So, do you know what's funny? Um, people ask me this, and I think I was twelve or thirteen years old, and my mum was going to Weight Watchers, mm-hmm. and she would come home and you know she'd go to the little Weight Watchers meetings, and she'd come home and put the Weight Watchers seven day meal planner. I, I I still remember what it looks like on the fridge, and me and my sister used to be like, hmm, like because I just got to high school and discovered boys. Like, mm, might go on this Weight Watchers thing <laughs> <laughs> with my mum. I weigh 30 kilos, <laughs> but that's okay. Who cares? So I've got to get smaller. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so did you diet when you were in high school? Like, yeah. You, yeah. 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 I was what on what sort of dieting did you do when you were in <laughs> high school? I'll tell you mine after you told oh me yours. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I feel like it was like – I feel like Weight Watchers breakfast were like um, 30 grams of like – brand cereal or something with oh. light milk or yeah. oh god these days it would just would have been atrocious if you looked at it from a nutrition yeah. perspective like low fat cheese on a multi-grain roll with some lettuce i don't know don't right. worry about the protein <laughs> just have everything <laughs> low fat and it's just, fine yeah. yeah it was all that low fat um yeah. phase like yeah really interesting um low fat yogurt as a yeah. snack with a small handful of nuts a piece of fruit it was all <laughs> carbs and like dairy yeah really weird yeah thinking back like i wouldn't i wouldn't even have that stuff in my diet off season right now it's it's funny how it's all changed yeah dinner would have been meat and vegetables yep but through the day would have been like all this dairy and like fruit and like muesli or something for breakfast yeah bran i remember the bran that was a big one with like milk and yogurt and cheat yeah. like yeah just d- dairy all over the place i don't know how the diet even worked yeah it was calorie well, def- you've seen a calorie, calorie deficit. deficit that's it that's it yeah, yeah. My, my first diet that i decided to put myself on was um i'd have a piece of bread at breakfast piece of bread at lunchtime <laughs> Then be really hungry. <laughs> bread, bread life. Yeah, bread life. That lasted three days, <laughs> and then I decided I'm no good at dieting. <laughs> yeah, this sucks. Where's yeah. the lollies at? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's interesting has it how it all changes. But did you like? Were you involved in a particular sport or anything? Or so um, I think I did some dancing, and I wasn't like I was okay, but I wasn't great. There was I've a, seen I, you dancing. I tried a lot of things. Yes, yeah, well, <laughs> not that kind of dancing. <laughs> yeah. so a little bit different to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like jazz, I, I did some jazz and a little bit of um, 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 tap, but I really sucked at tap. Like I was terrible. <laughs> I was like the elephant with the tap shoes on. Like it, it was, it was the opposite of graceful. I don't know. Yeah, what? Yeah, that that was very short lived. And then I did some jazz and I was okay at that, um, but I just wasn't. I just, I just don't think I was meant to be a dancer. Like it just wasn't really my jam. So like all the structured stuff. Yeah. You know? Definitely not talking about going to a nightclub and, like, going dancing with my friends. Yeah, I thought you are pretty good at that. Yeah, I go all right in that department, but this was, like, a bit different. Anyway, so I just thought, oh, well, this is not for me. Um, I dabbled around with softball for a bit. I did soccer. Yeah, we both did softball. I remember having that conversation. Netball and soccer in school. Yeah. I did regional softball, regional, district, regional swimming. What what position in uh, softball did you play? Do you remember? Um, Centre. <coughs> And um, uh, I used to pitch, 
and and then I don't know. I I think I used to sit between um, second and third base or something out there somewhere. Yeah. Whatever that shortstop. Yeah, that. Yes, that's the one. Shortstop. And then um, yeah, swimming was like freestyle and breaststroke. I was half decent at those two strokes mm-hmm. and soccer. Oh, I don't know. And netball, I was wing defense or center. Yeah, that's because we're both short. So I used yes. to play those positions as well. Yes. <laughs> and that was it. And then I just kind of I didn't really find anything that I was really half decent at until I competed for the first time. And then So I, I was gonna ask that was the next yeah. question. What what triggered triggered the whole competing thing? Like did you see? So, photos he, so this is a funny story. So I was in England and I had an English boyfriend and we were he was drinking Bex and I was drinking vodka out of a can, UDLs, mm-hmm. in the middle of the day on a Sunday. And there was a girl who was in the original, like, random, like, piece of information. She was in the original Big Brother house in England. The original Big Brother. And her name was Adele. And she was getting ready for her first figure competition mm-hmm. inside the gym that we were both personal training from. Oh, okay. And um, and the more I watched her, and she was gay, and she had her, like, partner, like, following her around for this 12-week process, like you know, getting footage, um, taking photos, videos, all the way through until it was time for her to get on stage. And I said to Toby, I've, we've got to go and, like, support this girl. And, go, like, and watch go and watch her do this weird thing on stage, whatever it is that she's doing. I didn't know anything about the sport. Fast forward, like, the Sunday came around, competition day came around and we, we turned up and there was this guy, like, with this American accent, um, check out this girl, she's ripped, like, this <laughs> M- And I was like, what am I watching? And, and like, like, looking back, though, do you think she was ripped? Because you know how at the time... Like when you first watch these shows, you're like, this person's ripped and really they're not. No, they really were. Like she really was ripped. Yeah, and um, but and for the first time I saw these figure girls on stage, these teeny tiny little girls that like had no fat and like these amazing muscles and I had just been PTing probably for about six months by, by that stage but mm-hmm. I was doing a lot of uh, recreational drinking with my boyfriend and we were just kind of sitting up the back and I had a vodka in my hand and I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and these girls turn around, they're wearing G-strings. And I was yeah. like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> put your bum away. Like, and there's me with my bum out. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's funny how things, like, turn out, isn't it? <laughs> and now that's me. <laughs> yeah, so um, – so that's what happened. So I was just like, oh, my God, like I've never seen anything like it, but like also wow. Yeah. And then, yeah, fast forward, I think probably 12 months I was at home and um, the personal training coordinator at the Fitness First that I was working for in Wollongong, he was doing a show in Sydney. So we all had this convoy of um, of uh, people that were working at the gym that he was like our PT manager and we all went up to Sydney and watched him and by then I'd been a PT for like a year and a half. And he got on stage and then the figure girls came back out on stage. So for the second time ever, I saw – they all walked out and they started posing and I was like – So when was this, Katie? How old were you? 2004. Oh, yeah. And the, all the figure girls walked out and – Because there like, was no they, such thing as bikini then. No. Like bikini divisions didn't exist. Figure was where it was at. Yeah. Yeah, it was figure. And they all walked out and they st- started hitting their poses and I was like <gasps> – the best. <laughs> Look at those beautiful girls with those beautiful bodies. Like I've never seen anything like it. Like I, I want to look like that. Yeah. Like I have to do that. Like just once, I have to know what that feels like. And then I found a coach. It was actually Susie Blanche. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, me. she it was, was in Wollongong. Yeah, and um, all those years ago. And yeah, so she prepped me for my first show, and um, I jumped on stage. Unfortunately for me, I was shredded to the bone. Nobody turned up, so I got first place. <laughs> By default. <laughs> I did look good though. That was the red costume you wore. I think I've seen pictures. No, of no, that. no, no, no. Even even before that, 2005, I actually started. Yeah, that was WMBF, but I did AMB. Oh, this was AMB. I did a couple of AMB shows two years before the red bikini. That was like. Isn't it funny when you look back at, like, I look at my first competitive photos as well, and my yeah. face is really dark with tan. Mm. Like, it takes a while to get used to the. The tan. Yes. <laughs> and the whole makeup. Yeah, like who scenario. put shoe polish on my head? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like, like okay. That's awful. It's very strange. <laughs> Get it off. <laughs> Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so tell so me about your first experience. Like so I walked on stage, I was shredded to the bone. I think I had striated glutes and just abs on abs on abs and like front bangs and a, a bun. I don't know what I was thinking, but I had a bun. <laughs> and this green bikini and, uh, and I... Was that and, velvet? And an ordinary tan with too much oil. And um, because velvet, velvet was 
all the rage back then. Oh, yeah, velvet with the um, crystal diamantes. Yes, well, actually, yes, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it was, yes. And, uh, and I won by default. So open short figure, walked out on stage and it was just me and I was like, oh, shit. Anyway. That surprises me because normally oh, the, um, do my the short poses. classes, there's a lot of girls in there. There was no one there. It was yeah. AMB South Coast Titles yeah. at <laughs> Shell Harbour Workers Club <laughs> in March 2015. Yeah. yeah, and then, I don't know, a couple of weeks later I did one in Gold Coast and then so it was quite a bit another of time one in before Sydney. You, when you went and watched, like 2000, what did you say, four? You yeah. went and watched one and then 10 years later you actually got up on stage. No. What have I said wrong? No, know, 2005. Right no, 2003 I was in England. I yeah. watched Adele on stage. Yeah. 2004 I watched my boss on stage in Wollongong. And 2005, that next year, I was on stage doing my first ever show. Oh, okay. I thought you said 2015. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 2000. you did. You did. Oh, well, <laughs> I do apologise. Listen. listen. Just listen to me. <laughs> Put Mr. Pointer away. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll behave. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so that was um that was my first show, and then I planned to do shows the year after, but I was like, I oh, had did this, you like, do a routine for your first business. show? Did they yes. do routines then? It was to uh, Christine seconds. Aguilera's um, what's that song? Dirty. I bet. Yes. Oh no, it was. Was it? Yes. Oh, Katie. <laughs> we'll have to find that Why footage from footage somewhere. Of that? You're yeah. like, where's that video? Mm. Amazing. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> She's taking notes, like, find that video. Yeah. <laughs> find it. Yeah, that's good. Did you have a video of that? Did they film it then? or? I'm sure that I, I, I could get my hands on some footage. I Because I did it at the Sydney show again. Yeah. No, no. F- fighter. Oh, Fighter. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, she was pretty cool back then. She was, yeah. There was like a kneeling, like, oh, anyway, I'll find it. I, pff, you'll love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course you will. Mine was to, um, my first routine was to that song by Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams. Oh, so, oh, what, a, <laughs> what, a, what a track. It was kind of like remixed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. It was bad. <laughs> yeah, no, I bet it was great. I had front bangs. Yeah, well, yeah, I did too. And mm. then um, the first time I went up on stage, because back then they did like split for figure, like prejudging, and then like in the morning, and then you go back in the afternoon. And you did whatever. the same stuff, and then the presentation. I remember that. So the first time I had a fringe in yeah. the morning, and then there was this girl she'd been competing for ages, or lady I should say, and she goes, "You can't, you can't have a fringe." That <laughs> So she made me pin it back so I had to come up on stage for the next Aww. round of judging and I pulled my fringe off. Yeah. Because she said it looked silly. She wasn't happy with the fringe. No. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs down to the bangs. Yeah. 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 All, right. All right then, lady. Mm. Mm. But yeah. yeah, she was very intimidating. She was very muscly, so I just did what I was told. I'll just do what the muscly lady says. Yeah. So did you make many mistakes for your first show? Um... No, but I do remember being highly stressed in my prep. Just, it was just all new, like, do you know? Yeah. Just really stressed. Like, I just remember I used to, poor Susie, I used to ring Susie and I probably just would, like, call her on a Sunday and just not get off the phone and she was probably just like, I've got a (laughs) boyfriend, like, (laughs) get off my phone, like, go away. But what I didn't. Sort of but at the time, stressed about? I'll be like, well, like, you know, are these carbohydrates okay? But what about if, like, I want the nuts? Like, can I have the nuts? Or like, is this the right carbohydrate? And what about this food? Well, what about if I'm really hungry? Is there something else I could have? And what could I have if I could have something else? What would <laughs> it? What would it be? So basically, you were. That was a punish from hell. hell. Athlete from he- yes. Yeah. Yeah, it would. Poor Susie. Anyway. Because what would you do if you've got clients like that? Like what is, what is your strategy to deal with clients that are um, needy? <laughs> what do I do? Not answer the phone? Turn yeah. the phone off? Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a fantastic promotion yeah. for and I, <laughs> yeah. Just by the way, guys, I'm available for prep, prep coaching. <laughs> <laughs> she turns the phone up, that means you're punished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, they were warned. So that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, tell me about your, like, because you've, 
and I don't mean to sound funny when I say it, but you've you've gone through a lot of coaches, not gone through a lot of coaches, but That's you've okay. utilised a lot of different coaching services yeah. and experienced a lot of different um, ways of doing things. And yeah. I mean, I'm the same as well. And I think a lot of people these days are the same. So um, they'll kind of hop from one coach to the other, not because they didn't see results with the previous coach, but more because it's a learning thing and it's yeah. it's nice to learn different ways. Yeah, yeah. So, like, after Susie, like, who did you go to? So, um, uh, where did I go after that? Mel Zimmerman? Yes. So I did all and of she two. did A&B. Mel, was she so from we, A&B? So we were all WMBF. WMBF, which doesn't exist anymore, I don't think, does it? Oh, look, who knows. Yeah. Or if it does, I think it might be um, WNBF. I'm trying to think. It all gets confusing, doesn't it? There's about 93 federations. Yeah. I can't – yeah, I don't even know. Yeah. yeah. Not on your side. WNBF would be on the website. There you go. Yeah. Not so Australia. Yeah. So WNBF all of 2007, it was five shows and I ended up – I finished that year with um, – <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. Just me being silly. Um, I finished up in 2007 in New York. So we're the, at the time the top three turned pro. So we all turned – Deanne Murphy, myself and Asha Pryor all turned pro at the Nationals in Sydney. And then we went three weeks later or something to New York to do the World Championships, oh, no. which is a pro debut. Yeah. Um, and actually there was two girls who are now IFBB pro as well. One's not competing um, – ja- Janet Ma- Masako, Angela yep. Mraz. Yep, they I were remember both, those girls. They were both top two, top three mm-hmm. at the time. And I feel like there might be one more that I can't think of the name. Um, Alison Fran, she came across to IFBB. So they all came from WMBF. Yeah. Anyway, fast forward 2009, I did a pro show in Barbados. Was that with Charlie? And n- no. Oh, I don't even know who I was... I don't even remember. I actually have got no idea. Yeah. So fast forward 2010, I started working with Lane. Norton. Yes. Yep. So I did 2010, um, my first two IPB shows with Lane. Yep. And, um, I yeah, I, I came up looking really good for the first one. Okay for nationals, but I think probably missed the mark a bit with conditioning at the second show. Um, you, you, I remember that show, though, you'd put on a lot of muscle. Yeah, yeah. Like you were more muscly for that one? Yeah, yeah, I was definitely bigger, but um, but maybe it was just one of those things. I, I feel like for me, Amy, when I, I've done season A and season B, it just hasn't, it doesn't always pan out. Yeah. Condition-wise, you know, because, oh, I just think the body's tired, yeah. you know. Like maybe you haven't had enough of a break in between. Um, and that's happened, a, actually, if I was completely honest and I looked back over all the times that I've really – nailed season b when i've done season a yeah maybe i've never done that huh Mm. um because all the season b shows i bombed out in europe as well because i did three shows america sydney melbourne at the start of 2012 and then i did poland and spain at the end of that year and i bombed out not bombed out but i wasn't competitive and i feel like i maybe could have been i just I don't know. I just think my body was tired. If you were fresh, you could do, have do you had know? a better chance. Yeah, yeah, more of an off season. Yeah, yeah. Which anyway. is interesting because some people get better by doing back to back shows, and other people. I think I. Yeah, yeah. Get and worse. unless it's a unless it's like, boom, boom, boom over a period of four weeks, yeah, then right. then I definitely get better. Yeah. Um. And but then if I back up and I go again, you know, at the end of that year, then generally speaking, it it, it doesn't. It doesn't pan out in my favour, mm. especially from a conditioning point of view. But what are the warning signs for that? Like when do you start to notice that the body's not responding how it should? Like have I you got anything that sort of stands out to you or like do you feel particularly tired, like more than usual? More or? Definitely tired and and I feel like if, if I'm thinking back to all those season B shows, I feel like just, you know, like for example when I'm six weeks out <clears> – <throat> And when I know that um, I'm on track, like say if I'm doing a show and I know that I'm going to be on but by the time I get to the stage, like if I'm six weeks out, I know because I can look in the mirror and I can look at my physique and be like, yeah, like I'm, I'm good. Yeah. And, and, and if I'm not going to make it on time, I get to six weeks out and I'm just not convinced. Like I'm like, yeah. I might get there, but 
I don't the know. Confidence is. I might not. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, like now, for example, I can absolutely say I'm. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna miss conditioning in LA for my next show. Yeah. So a little bit different. Everything with feels bikini. like it's on track. And yeah. I'm. Yeah. Um, I'm. I've been ahead of schedule right up until a week ago. So yeah. Um, but if you want to, the name. Do you want me to go back to the who I worked with? Oh, just yeah. Rattle happy? them off. Yeah, yeah. So I'll rattle them off. So it was Lane, uh, 2010, and then uh, when I decided I wanted to go for my pro card with the IFBB for the first time, I started working with Charlie. Uh, I worked with Charlie 2011, 2012, mm-hmm. kind of prepped myself um, for the Europe shows, season B, 2012. And then... Um, and then Have you worked with Hazo? Yeah. Then 2013, Hazo? I, I, I decided after I came back from Europe and I, I had to make a decision about whether or not placing outside the top... 10. Mm-hmm. I, I placed inside the top 15 in Europe, um, but I placed outside the top 10. Yeah. And I had to come back and just have a conversation, you know. Um, actually, I had a conversation with Charlie and I just was like, well, uh, is that enough for me? Mm. Like, outside the top 10 at the, you know, international level as an amateur, is that enough? And the answer was no. So I just was like, right, well, what do I need to do? It was obvious that I needed to be bigger. Yeah. Um, and so I took a year and a half off. Uh 14 months and then I did the 2014 Pro Q and I went back to Lane just thinking that like because in my head I was like all right well who's the person for this job like Mm. to get this pro card across the line and I just really thought it was Lane because I remember I remember the decision making process and in my head I was like he got me full and hard yep full and hard is what I need to be on stage if I'm going to turn pro like I can't just be conditioned I need the the roundness in the muscles. Mm. I need capped delts and, do, do you know? Yeah. Um, figure and physique, when you turned pro, it was, figure was the same. Like you needed the foot. You couldn't just be conditioned, which no. I, I was pretty good at doing that. Yeah. I, I needed round muscles, which I just – It was the size. I didn't have. Yeah. I just didn't have. And, and maybe it was lack of muscularity. So anyway, so I went away and I put a whole bunch of muscle on, worked really hard, like eight grew, eight grew – came back with muscle I'd never had before, but I missed conditioning. Mm. Um, And that was interesting because I flexible dieted with Lane um, and he had steady rate cardio in my protocol in 2010 when I first worked with him. But the time I went back, by the time I went back to him, he had pulled the steady rate cardio and it was just interval training and it was also flexible dieting. It wasn't um, macros. So 2010 it was just macros, but it wasn't really flexible dieting per se. This yeah. was more flexible, no steady rate cardio. I'd never done no steady rate cardio before ever. Um, and, yeah, it looked like uh, I remember having a really good, frank, honest chat with Tony Doherty, like off the back of that show. And um, he was really good. He was just like, you know, like you just you just missed the mark, Katie. You, um, you, you know, you're known for your conditioning. And you turned up to that show and you just didn't have that conditioning that you're known for. Like, and, mm. and it, co- it hurt you And it day. cost you, really cost you. Like, but um, you had muscle that you needed that you didn't have the last time you were on a pro-Q stage, you know, with Laura in 2012. So it wasn't – you didn't go – you didn't necessarily go backwards. You kind of went sideways. Yeah. Like, so you, it's just a you needed the stone. muscle, but, but, but now you need to, the muscle with the – yeah, with the condition. Yeah. And maybe, you know, maybe the coach that you worked with and the protocol that you used maybe wasn't um, conducive to you achieving those two things simultaneously. And I would say he was like, what did you weigh? I think I said 58. He's like, well, you know, Amanda on stage at the Arnold's, pretty much she's your height, is about 56 and a half. So I would say about a kilo and a half down. like Which is like so minuscule really, but it makes a massive yeah. difference. Yeah. And he said, I'll never forget, he said, I reckon a kilo and a half down, I can't, I, I can't see anyone in Australia beating you, yep. on, honestly. Yep. Like, you just, you're very good. Like, you, but, but that, you just miss the thick ways. You just, you need yeah. to just bring that conditioning, but with that muscle. Um, getting on to the yeah. next topic was, like you said, you stood on stage next to Katie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she ate me Katie. alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Katie's, you know, got the tiny Structure. waist and big bum and... But not big bum, but big muscly bum. Yeah, um, yeah. She's got the big muscly legs and, and huge a, delts, like 
Amazon right. woman. Yeah, 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 in comparison like mm. that day. Um, and that was a pro Q and, and just um, discussing like, like you've been for the pro card numerous times. Like mm. how does it feel to stand on stage time after time for the pro card and not quite make it? Like yeah, it was what really, did that do to you? Yeah, it was really demoralising. So there's, um, oh, look, probably all of Australia in the bodybuilding arena know, you know, uh, probably know how I how I was feeling about it along the way. And there's a couple of people that I spent a lot of time on the phone with. Actually, MJ was one of them. Yeah. Because she was kind of doing the same thing but coming from the open tall figure. So, yeah, we we spent a lot of time on the phone just like, oh, like. <laughs> so close. Just but so frustrated, you yeah. know. Like she would win an overall and then she would go like to the pro queue and, and get beaten and she'd place third like and yeah. and I would place third but I've been um off the back of Australian Australasian titles and she's like gone like to Western Australia and won an overall and then we've both gone to the to the um Melbourne and placed like third like not even like second yeah so we would be sitting on the phone like oh, we're confused. I we're confused like I don't, I don't get it like what are, like what are we What's missing from the package that we're putting on stage? So all that, like, and so then... how many times have you actually gone for the pro card? Like, So 2012 Pro-Q, 2011 Pro-Q, 2012 Pro-Q, 2014 Pro-Q, 2015 Arnold Classic Australia 1, 2, 3, 4, where it was actually a pro qualifier. Um, 2015 I actually didn't win my height class, so I didn't even end up in the overall. In the, in the overall, yeah. So, I, yeah, I missed again that year. And then at the end of that year, I was just like, oh, you know what, I'm just going to do the Amateur Olympia, but uh, I'm going to just focus on the national title. Because I, I was so... I remember you saying that. And I, and I will, I'll be honest, like, this is exactly like what happened when I turned it, pro. Yeah. I was like, um, I, I can't go through the pain and the heartache and the anguish of missing out another time, especially in this 12-month period, because mm. just, it'll just break my heart. So I'm just going to go there and I like – and no disrespect to anyone, but I just – I knew I was good enough to take the national title. I just knew. I knew that I, – I knew that there was going to be someone that was hot on my tail, but I just – I had to just believe in myself. There I was always like, is. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Th- it was never – no, no. Figure. It was never going to be easy. I wasn't saying it was in the bad, but I just – I knew that I had it in me to, to get it across the line. Like yeah. I, I knew I could do it. So I was just like, I'm just going to go for that national title – and you know what? Hey, if I win the national title, I end up in an overall. If I win the overall and I end up with a pro card, then so be it. And funnily enough, that's exactly what happened. So yeah. it, it was like the second that I let go of like, I have to have that pro status, I turned pro. It was yeah. really weird. Yeah. Yeah. And you were there when I got the phone call. Yeah, so. I was. <laughs> yeah, I remember that night. Yeah. My dream came true. I think we'd just done cardio too. Yes. And we'd gone for a walk or we just And I was pretending, yeah, are you alone? Yes, I'm alone. <laughs> How can I help you? Are you, you? sitting down? Are you <laughs> sitting down? Yes. Definitely there's no one with you. No, no, there's no one with me. I'm holding Amy's hand. Yeah. No, yeah. There's, no, there's no one here. Do not breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. We're giving you your pro card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've still got the phone call recorded on my phone somewhere. Oh, that's awesome. It was a very awesome. special moment. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So hard work pays off. Yeah. Well, it, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Eventually. Eventually. But, yeah, oh, God, I was so close to – I think I did a podcast with you after the 2014 Pro-Q. Yeah, you did. Just before this show. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I was like, I'm never going for my Pro-Card again. I've had yeah. enough. Stuff like, it. No, I don't <laughs> care. I don't care. And you were like, oh, just one more time. And I'm like, no, yeah. never, never again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I was back. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. What do you think the hardest thing about competing is like, you know, is it the dieting, is it the Not training? being allowed to eat Doritos. Oh, Doritos is your favourite thing. I really love Doritos. Oh, oh yeah, because you normally like still have a glass of wine once a week, but you can't have Doritos. Yeah, no, no Doritos, too much sodium. Mm. Mm. No, no, Um, in all serious, aside from yeah, all Dorito comments aside, I think it's... Uh, the diet. So also, like, I'm a, um, um, I'm an extrovert. So my personality, like, I, like I feed off other people's energy, and I do like my own time. Yeah. And that's important to me. But I also, I love, you know, I love to be with other people, and um, yeah, like, I mean, being single. Uh, sometimes when you're a competitor, you're in a relationship with someone that is from that world as well. So. 
you know, like much like yourself, like you will, you'll train together and you'll, you know, maybe food prep together and you'll go and have a clean steak together because you can, one person's dieting and you can kind of modify it, you know, sitting in a restaurant or, or whatever. Um, I think doing it, doing competing single at, a, at an elite slash professional level is um, sometimes even a little bit more challenging because yeah. like you can't, like you don't always have that companionship so i can get really lonely yeah definitely and i and yeah and that can be a bit of a struggle yeah so so what that do you ties do in with the social side of it yeah absolutely so what do you do to try and like combat that so um uh, i'll just try not to think about it and just find a really good netflix series <laughs> <laughs> to just sink my teeth into <laughs> Um, and uh, or I'll like I'll socialize with my gr- like with my girlfriends that are also yeah. getting ready for shows. Yeah, and and socialize around my cardio, and then on a Saturday, like I'll try and do um, like if I've got weight training scheduled on a Saturday, I'll try and like train with girlfriends. Yeah, because all my girlfriends are train with a friend. Or yeah, yeah, like yeah, just stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and then just yeah, family. Um, and see my girlfriends that yeah that are doing shows that are just kind of in that same world, so they get it. I don't really need to explain. Like I'm four weeks out. Like I need to eat at a certain time. Or yeah, whatever. they just understand. Yeah, and it's we're going easy. to the pub for a steak at six thirty p.m. Yeah, that's like food time. All that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is easy. Yeah, and you've not only um, competed at you know pro level and done numerous amateur shows, but you've kind of transitioned now into more of the judging side of things too. Yeah. So yeah. how did all of that come about? Like what made you want to judge? I think um, uh, I've been involved in the sport for so many years and I just um, – look, I'm sure at, at some point, like I'll, you know, I'll hang the shoes up and, uh, and it's nice when I'm not doing my own shows and my own competitions to just give back to the sport because, mm-hmm. I, like, I love, um, I love the sport. Yeah, Me like too. love sitting there and watching the girls on stage. I I love the men's bodybuilding. I love sitting there watching like you know the guys that are like so muscular and so lean. So aside from the the divisions that you compete in, because obviously you've done figure and and now bikini, yeah. like what's your favourite category to watch? Open men's bodybuilding. Yeah, I don't know why. I just really like I just love seeing like those like the big. I mean. All the weight classes, but I really love watching the under hundreds and the over hundreds. Yeah, that's exciting. Just big and like so lean and like you know ninety five kilos, one hundred and ten kilos, one hundred and five kilos, but like with no body fat. Like I, it just, I just think it's amazing to watch. Who's your favorite bodybuilder? Do you have one? Um, amateur, professional, any. Uh. I think if we're going way back, like physique-wise, definitely Frank Zane. Yeah. Wowzers. Yeah. And what about the girls? Like, was there a, a figure athlete that you used to look up to? Monica Brandt. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I love Monica. I was just like, I was just like, I just want to be you. Yeah. I want to just be the brunette version of you. That would yeah. be amazing. I remember I saw her at an expo for the first time in 2010. She was at a, I uh, don't even remember which booth that she was at. She had a denim skirt on. It was about this big. Yeah. <laughs> And I just was like that. I, could, I, t- I don't even know what to – like, look at those legs. Wow. <laughs> like, she had the biggest line in the whole expo and just this denim skirt this big with these legs. Just holy moly. Yeah. Like, you're even better in real life. Yeah, she was, wasn't she? Amazing. I was so inspiring. All of the um, oxygen magazines and all the fitness magazines. And yeah. She was in all of them. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, even better in real life and an even nicer person in real life. Beautiful person. Yep. She's a Christian – um, I've actually worked on her camp when she came out here years yep, ago. Me too. Yeah. Drove her around a bit. Spent some time with her. Just a beautiful soul. Yeah, and she's still involved in the industry quite heavily as well. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Really lovely. And then there was a girl, uh, a girl that was with Gaspari that I was obsessed with for a Jamie. while. Jamie. Nah. Oh, brunette. Uh, she was real like she was really sexy. <laughs> Long brown hair. She used to always wear it curled on stage. She was bigger, but it was just when I started. Ava. No. There was another one. She was Latino. And then she ended up doing some um um some comment uh some like commentating and stuff for Oh, I know Gaspari. who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. So then What's it was her? her? Yeah, yeah. 
it it will come to me. Yeah. Whoever she was, she was in the, she was floating around in the top five when I very first started competing. Yeah. Anyway, her and then it was um, and then it was Candace Keen. Yeah, Candace Keen obsessed. Yeah, yeah. She came out to yeah, Australia just, and competed a couple of times. Yeah, just I, I think she won the Arnold's her. a couple of times, didn't she? Yeah, she in did. Australia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those three were the girls that um, yeah, that, that I just, I suppose I really looked up to. Like physique, what, Fel- Felicia Romero. Oh, that's right. Ha! I yeah. got it. Felicia. Yeah, yeah, it's very sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she so was yeah, awesome. those three. Yeah. I liked her because she was like round and like curvy and like full muscles. N- she was never like shredded, but she just always just had. Very aesthetic. Sh- beautiful shape. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I've always been a real sucker for shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the bodybuilding and the, f- and the figure, in all the divisions. Because you've always said to me that you particularly liked. Rach White yes. and Keddie's physique. So Laura my Keddie. three favourite. So he, this question's probably not on your little list over there, but I'll tell you. No, your favourite. My three favourite female physiques. physiques in in Australia always were Keddie, Rach White, and your lovely self. I'll pay you later. No, true story. <laughs> really? Yeah, no payment required. Oh, thanks, Katie. No, yeah, honestly, yeah. Thank I'll just, you. And it was yeah, it was always a shape thing. Yeah, because you all like I mean, you we all, all had the shape, but none of us particularly had the conditioning like you, did we? Well, you you three needed like mine and Ash's condition and your shape, and then Wowzers like Miss Olympia, yeah, we, 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 Miss we Olympia's have everywhere, Miss Olympia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Miss Olympia's everywhere. Yeah, but yeah. Rachel's gone on to win a world title. Yeah, so that's she's amazing. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to see Kitty do another show. Actually, so. I would just, I just that would just make my day. Yeah, I'd also like to see the lady that's interviewing me on stage at some point. So yeah, well, we'll, we'll see if how that goes. If she could get her act together, <laughs> that'd be Nine great. months' time, maybe. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, thank you very much for coming on my Posing Coach podcast. You're so welcome. Um, if anyone's looking to track you down or find you, how do they go about that? Um, probably Instagram, ifbbpro underscore Katie Morris. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, otherwise, I'm at World Gym Castle Ray Street. And on Facebook, have you got a you've got an athlete page on Facebook? Yeah, it's just um, uh, Katie Morris IFBB Bikini Pro. Okay, thank you very much, Katie. Thanks and for having me. You're most welcome. Thank you for coming in. And if you'd like to get in contact with me, um, visit my Facebook page, My Posing Coach, on Instagram, My Posing Coach. Once again, make sure you subscribe and share this podcast with Katie Morris and myself, and register for any updates via the website myposingcoach.com. Thanks for listening.